guys. Welcome. This is Equilibrium 2 by Arcsung, a new preset pack for Omnisphere, curated by the homie Luftrum. Really excited to be checking out these 64 new patches. And from what I checked out before the stream, they're phenomenal. There's a special discount code in the description of this video uh, and with the link if you want to get this pack. I got it for about $20 today, which is pretty good for a pack of this quality. If you guys don't know, Luftrum is, in my opinion, just putting out the best, best patches for Omnisphere. And so I'm really excited to be checking this out um, because, yeah, it's just a phenomenal thing. And with 64 patches, it's actually reasonable for us to think that we might be able to get through most of them today. So without further ado, why don't we jump in and check some of these out and then we can kind of talk a little bit more about what's going on here. Let's start with Moonlit Wander. I just have these randomized here so we can check out different stuff. Pretty cool. And the mod wheel here, I love how simple he's laid out some of the instructions here. With the aftertouch, we can get some vibrato. Pretty subtle. And then if we increase the mod wheel. Ooh, that's kind of nice, isn't it? spooky and all of these sounds have this wonderful uh character to them um that 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 just i don't know it's that left room thing isn't it uh so let's check out space prophet kind of character uh it's a little bright let's see if we can darken it to me somewhere around there sounds a little more analog kind of like it in that neighborhood a little bit more Moving on to Still Dawn. It's very nice. And then if we use the mod wheel here. extra string layer in. This patch fucks. We can check out what's going on here. We've got this e banjo and atmosphere strings very popular sound in omnisphere but we listen to just by hitting the little led here we can turn that off so we can hear i actually kind of like it just like this i don't think it needs that right then again maybe that's just what it sounds like without the uh, mod wheel I think, I think it does. Uh, Muta Quartz going back over here. Let's check out a new one. Really big shimmery type thing, right? Zozilla, I agree that Omnisphere can certainly be a gear acquisition syndrome killer in the sense that it's just like, it could sound so good. And every time I go check out a new preset pack, 
uh, whether it's designed by Luftrum or curated by Luftrum, I know it's going to be of the highest quality. And um, they just really do sound great. And it does make it hard to want to spend a whole lot of time twiddling knobs and stuff when these sounds are so great just right out of the box. So we can mute that down by using the mod wheel. cool lots of reverb baked in there a uh, little tip guys if you ever feel like a patch is getting too crazy you can actually just turn the effects off by hitting this led you don't even have to go into the plugin to do that and now we can get that same sound without the effects if that's what we're looking for right uh, let's check out blair gate haunting gated noise Aftertouch there adds a lot of distortion. We can get it really dark with the mod wheel. Really cool sound. By the way, can I get a scum cheers in the chat? Let's get this going. I just want to say thank you to everybody who makes these Wednesday night live streams. We do one of those every week, by the way. Welcome to the Scum family. If you haven't already been here, uh, I'm Vulture Culture. We do something on this channel every Wednesday uh, doing some sort of synth-related stuff. So can I get a big old cheers to everybody out there? I just want to say thank you so much for making this the best night of the week. And uh, yeah, fuck yeah. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Mmm. This thirst mutilator from Shorts Brewing fucks. Mmm. Yes. Let's go. Born of death. Born of death? Oh, there it is. <laughs> sort of range gatherer it reminds me a lot of this sound that I heard Jamie Morton make on the uh, prologue love cinematic stuff and so i agree with that zozilla mike welcome to the stream how's it going um <clears throat> aquatic asks, do you ever use any voice libraries by voice library what do you mean uh some sort of like vocal sample pack type thing if that's the answer then not a lot because i'm a vocalist myself so i'm probably more likely to just want to like sing something myself but if i wasn't i probably wouldn't be um or i'd probably use them more uh, Lonely Soul. This one is good. We can darken that even further. But this is very good right in this neighborhood. actually use the melt master filter here put it into high pass mode add some resonance blend that resonance in and now we can kind of change the overall timbre of that wanted to take it in a different sort of direction right if you want to give it a little bit more mid-range to it uh aquatic says 
Recently picked up Folds from Void and Vista, and that has some beautiful vocals with atmospheric pads. Uh, I, I haven't even heard of that. So I'll have to check out Void and Vista. It sounds like a super cool thing. And if you like it aquatic, I'm sure I will too. Um, I'll have to check that out. This one's called Soft Face. Take it really dark, you know. It'd be very cinematic. Depends on what we're looking to do, uh, what genre we're in. This is called Alien Hymn. Oh, it takes me immediately into that vintage digital character. Daddy loves vintage digital. with the breathiness because the D50 wasn't so great. Had that type of thing tragically. Let's see what we're looking at. We're looking at this um, boy soloist being ran through some granular. So if we click that, we can really see what's going on here. Let's uh, solo this layer and turn granular off so you can hear what this would sound like on its own. sample but by using the granular engine we're getting this interesting sort of scatter effect so we're, it's breaking it up a little bit and then checking out this one we have gregorian men's o's Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I've avoided, uh, some people have asked me to do sample packs in contact format, but like the whole contact versus contact player stuff, like I just don't, don't find that interesting. So when my next sample pack comes out, which by the way, I'm done recording, a um, bunch of vintage digital pads, it's going to be called Revenant, more details to follow. Of course, members of this channel will get it for free. Um, I'm going to release it in just WAV file format and sound font. So you could load it into contact or something like uh, Tal's sample player, anything like that. Um, you could drop the samples directly into Omnisphere. This one is very good. Um, yeah, c completes better, but I just don't care. Uh, Haunted Nebula, not the biggest fan of native. creepy one here glass eye you can see that we're looking at these wavetables here almost like an additive type of sound Really beautiful sound. Uh, I wish that the key following was higher on some of these patches so that when we got up higher here, you would be able to see that in uh, the key follow here, that even if I've darkened the sound, uh, there there would be still a little bit more. Uh, some of those higher notes would come tr through, but that is of course a preference thing. Um, checking out Wave Brush. <laughs> Interesting, the mod wheel adds this extra. Decent samplers, another good one. I should check that out as well. Maglev. This is more of a bass sound. The 
let's check out the mod wheel now. Omnisphere can have this very FM sort of sound because it's probably what's going on in there. Either some incredible wave shaping. Yeah, and the wave shaper here can have this very FM sort of character to it. This is kind of remind you of like those uh, four op. I mean, like blown to shit, of course, but. Definitely could get some cool uh, EBM type stuff out of it so that's that's awesome we love we love to hear it uh to the sky yeah we'll go back to maglev in this case uh we're looking at circuit mono so innovation circuit triangle an uh, sh omega i wonder can i see what waveform that's actually from classic waveforms sh omega where would that be I don't see. It might be in the wavetables. There's so many waveforms in there. I don't know if I can find it. But yeah, we've got a couple of different things. Interesting the waveforms uh, ArcSun chose to use. Really nice ARP. Love, everybody loves a good ARP, right? Blue Starlight. What a beautiful name for a patch. So what we're checking out here is just the default sawtooth wave. That's crazy that he was able to get so much from that and a Moog modular saw uh, using hard sync on both of these. So one thing that I'd be interested, well, I won't be able to do it on this one, will I? There's a lot going on. So what we're looking at is um, boss chorus ensemble, right? So that's that, you know, original um, stomp box chorus. And then a tape slammer to give it that analog tape sort of feel and then running it through the re501 uh plug-in version of that built into omnisphere the chorus echo part of the reason i bought an re501 even though they're very expensive is just because i love how this sounds this particular echo to me it's just great and then just the proverb again kind of doing um the luftrami uh, it's a little brighter, I think, than Luftrum usually goes for, but super interesting. So we're going to Cork Shimmer. A good one. Really nice kind of texture. We can take it all the way. That's a very scary... tranquil that's a very cool sound something completely unique and again looking at the sound sources we've got um african stereo shake effects let's um if we go and hit plus here we can look at the info and this was uh recorded by eric person we can see um it's just incredible what can be done with the sound sources inside of omnisphere and kong wong lek 15 we've got fluttered tape this is a cool kind of uh little warbly really fun one retro felt hopefully some sort of piano thing Very cool lead, almost like undercurrent E. Let's check this one out. Just the saw and a sign. It's crazy what he's able to draw out of this with the.
really good and the uh, filter sounds really great in this one. This is using the colorful filter, decent amount of resonance. Yeah, just uh, gorgeous. Moving right along to Dark Warbird. What do you guys think of this sound bank so far? I'm really excited about it. I think I'll be using a lot of these sounds in my productions. I love vintage synths. I love expensive hardware, but you know, sometimes you just need to get it done. And a sound like this can be, you know, like a great place. <laughs> really deep in there and just have like that as the beginning of something to, to make a sound that complicated with that d depth of effects and everything would take a long time uh if you're using some hardware synthesizer i, I would think the doctor a baseline More squelch in there. Arrakis? Wonder what this could be. if we needed to. There's almost nothing on these low notes I'm playing. Very fascinating. Uh, galaxy horns. What are the stray light sounds? you're always going to get ambient, right? It's going to be huge. It's going to be apocalyptic. Although it could just be the way I'm playing it. I'd be curious if someone played like happier shit. Um, FM saw a hybrid bass stab. What a huge difference on the mod wheel there. Check Stray Light, Alex. You will love it. I'll definitely have to check it out. Um, feed Forward. Another bass sound. Love a bass with a lot of reverb on it. Air Trance. Very beautiful. Big fan of that one. 80s fantasy. The first sound when you load up the patch usually because this is uh, the first one alphabetically. This is a good one to start with.
mod wheel lets you drift away. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. After touch, right. Oh, that's so beautiful. An unexpected, right? And even if you like making your own sounds, to aquatic is a point. Sometimes it's worth paying to get decent sounds from a design master. We can go through, that's the beautiful thing about a plugin, is we can go in and see what's going on. And even if we want to see what's going on with the mod wheel, for instance, this is modulating the cutoff on, what is it, layer A and a little bit. And it's not doing anything on layer B. So we can see that the mod wheel is modulating the cutoff of layer A. So I would pull that back. We've got that different control there over what's going on. Super cool. I have this interesting octametal uh, one of those. So Zilla says you drop your own sa samples to granular engine this. Grabbed it, uh, grabbed it for that. Been surprised by sound. Beginning sounded like some Lincoln Park. <laughs> Magic dance here. Another using crystallized again. And we can take it all the way to just that interesting little additive vintage digital. I like it like that quite a bit. A very pretty sound. IBM sign. beautiful sound could definitely see that cutting through it's got a pretty big bite very cool ai runner yes that blade runner uh sound again but with more of an electric guitar twang Hypothesis. Welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? Whispering Echo. Ethereal synth voice hybrid. Ooh, that sounds immediately like, um, Iceland, the distorted reality. Let's see if I could call it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> it has that sound, right? If you guys have played, um, Majora's Mask. It's got that ter timbre to it. Uh, Kev, I certainly did not talk about a uh, a shit show of a launch uh, from Behringer with Vintage. I will check it out on the stream if uh, if they ever get it out. <laughs> but as of today, basically no one has it. Um... <laughs> Really great. Some some dry, some wet bass lines. Yes. Let's see here. Buzzo funk. Ooh, that one's good. Nick B Designs, welcome to the stream. Let's see how this sounds with the mod wheel. Regal asks, when using Omnisphere in a DAW, can you assign a single instance of Omnisphere to multiple audio tracks? Yes. So in Reaper, when I load Omnisphere, it asks me if I want to build 18 tracks of routing out of it because 
uh, we actually, I always use Omnisphere with just like one at a time because I'm boring like that. Um, technically, it's better for CPU optimization if you don't do it that way, I believe. I believe if you use, um, you, you can load eight different Omnisphere patches in here and each one can be routed out separately. And if we go over to multi here, we can see all of what we have. In this case, of course, it's just the one, right? But we can set the outputs to all these different outs, which can include not just eight stereo outs, but also an effects out, its own effects. These effects are always hanging out in here, but you could have your own auxiliary mixes. So going back to the master here. So this is in addition to all of the effects that you've got per layer, common effects per patch, and an auxiliary send per patch that's being used here pretty aggressively, right? Then with all eight of these, we have an additional four uh, auxiliary effects and a master set of effects. The number of effects you could have on, uh, on uh, Omnisphere is crazy. And of course, we have all of these preset rack, uh, racks here too which is crazy and all sorts of live mode stuff. If you want to use Omnisphere, it's basically kind of works like a tablet. You can even latch stuff. So if you've got like an arpeggiator or sequence going, you can latch it here and we could stack all sorts of stuff and you could stack it. So everything's going out of um, output A, which is kind of the mode it, it defaults to where everything's just going out there. That's kind of what you'd probably want for a stack, uh, depending especially if you're using this like in a live situation, per perhaps, maybe, or you could have it all routed separately, whatever works for you. Uh, this one's called Bottoms Up, Simple Fat Squelching Bass. Ooh. Quite, I guess, have you seen the preview footage for Sensua's Saga Hellblade 2? No, I have not. Uh, definitely need to check that out. Um, is that a new video game? I'm so fucking uh, lost when it comes to that stuff. Um, yeah. Mellow Grove. Velvety, warm, rich, soft keyboard. <laughs> pretty love a sound like that and there's an art to reverb in synth patches where you've got enough that it sounds massive but not too much to where it sounds um like it's just it's just muddy and i think this is that mx white welcome to the stream how's it going um i'm moderately smart on asio for all drivers if you have a question for me uh but somebody else probably is smarter there's always the it's the interesting thing about doing this channel is I'm convinced that on anything I might say, someone in the chat knows better than I, Warmstar. Welcome to the stream. Yes, I have. Uh, I have an Insonic uh, TS-10 that's getting repaired right now. So fingers crossed it can be repaired because um, my sense tech let me know it might not be able to be re repaired. The um, vacuum fluorescent tube display, whatever that is, cracked in shipping. And uh, that's pretty bad because they don't make them anymore. So this is called Past Whispers. that 
with uh, with the aftertouch. Cheers, guys. Um, yeah, TS10's a really cool synth. I think it's pretty underlooked. Whoa. Out. <laughs> uh, Boots March. This is a good one for if you just want to have like a nice little. Really great one. Big fan of that one. The woodpecker. Everybody loves a good woodpecker. Very pretty one. We can darken that if that's a little too uh, vintage or virtual analog for us. beautiful undercurrent E type sound. MX White says, I tried routing my uh, drum machine through USB into Bitwig. Had to do, had to use Jack router to do it. Ask her for all would not work. Um, okay. So I'm assuming that TR8S, I would look to see if there's any drivers for that. I want to say those Roland drum machines have an audio interface built into them. And to a certain extent, you might want to use that interface you know like does that make sense if that that might be what you want to set in your DAW or in Bitwig um to get the audio in I'm surprised Osseo for all would not work to it um does that make sense mx white does anybody else have any uh opinions there uh Zazilla says yeah the drivers are meant to be used as an interface meaning it will sound yeah uh bob probably knows <laughs> voice of arrival Listen to how that mod wheel changes it. Very cool sound. And we're listening to... <laughs> Some glitching flutes ran through the granular engine. Yeah, very neat. Death rust. Haunting metallic effects drone using the burning piano. <laughs> Hilarious vulture mom. That'd be a good one for some horror. Very 
cool sound. Warehouse growl. Very cool. Ambient Machine, welcome to the stream. How's it going? As with all Luftrum packs, I bought this one without even hearing it. I love it. Um, so did I. Yeah, I didn't even put on the demo. I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy it. Uh, the Salako engine, really great. Salako reference to aliens, right? It's the uh, Salako, the ship from there. Autumn, have a wonderful night. Take care, Xander. And congratulations on being an orange belt. So cool. Um, yeah, actually, weirdly, one of my favorite patches, just because I'm like, oh, that would be so much fun in some sort of audio situ situation where you need a spaceship. Like, that's the sound. That's the coolest version of that sound I've ever heard. A distorted feedback lead. guitar sound a la the JD-800 behind me. Kind of like a modern version of that. Digital Bellatron. Ooh, this is a very nice just... the thumb from the motion tracker yes absolutely fluttering love anything described as velvety oh, that's a very good like profit one thing i've noticed from like a sound design perspective here and this is just me just ad-libbing i'm sorry if you just want to hear the sounds Somebody else might be the better YouTuber for you to check out because I like to talk a lot. Um, one thing I've noticed about how ArcSun has decided to do these sounds is when you're like, okay, so if you're designing a sound and you're not listening to it with delay and reverb, you have a tendency to use more decay and more release because it adds more body weight and size to the sound, right? So if we turn the effects off, we actually have a very short sort of sound here. <laughs> Right? It's not super long, um, but if we turn those effects on, the re it gives the reverb the space to be the star. All the delays and stuff. Right? 
We can see what we got going on there. Filter and chorus on both of these guys, but the magic's happening. Just a lot of chorus echo into reverb on these sounds, and that's a great thing. We got the CS sign and a, another sign over here. Yeah, how is that restoration of the K2600, by the way? Fix the keys, LEDs, replaced fan with a Noctua one. Now I want to put the Zulu SCI 6.4 instead of floppy. Yes. Paris. Holidays here, but, dur but during work, it's hard sometimes, LOL. I want to go fuck up the next day. Uh, Kev Human says, I'm in the UK an hour ahead of Zozilla. I've considered doing these streams a little bit earlier, guys, um, for that reason. Maybe doing them on a different day, too. Um, I like streaming at night my time because it feels authentic to what I do, you know? Kind of feel like I'm in a dark, dingy goth club again. Um, that's how I like to feel. But uh, I, I have enough people want me to, I might stream earlier just for that reason. Checking out Enchanted Woods here with the Bark Cello. Yes. Uh, Diego Stocco. Oh, yes. We can control the pad mix here. If we want more of that. Interesting, MX White. Huh, does that give you the option to use the TRSA driver? Silly question, but you went to the Roland website and you updated the firmware and the drive, downloaded the specific drivers for that hardware, right? It's generally a good place to start. I'm assuming you already did that, but every once in a while that fixes the problem just off of that. Cold War static. This is cool too. This is a very cool sound. Voice of class. brightens that up. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you guys something real quick. Um, so we can move effects around. I'm on the common page so that's going to affect both the layers, which is this Angelos tube sample and the Iceland sample, right? And I'm going to turn the effects, the uh, spatial effects off real quick. And I'm going to load in Toxic, which is the bit crusher plugin inside of Omnisphere. And we're going to set the crush uh, and the sample reducer, not so crazy. And the wave shaper's off, which is good. See, that's a lot already. Oh, wait, I'm going the wrong way. So just like a little crush, so we start to get that noise, right? It's probably even a little intense. We could probably dial that back. What I'm going to try to show you guys is how to emulate vintage digital stuff. So if you're listening to a, uh, a Roland D50 right now, when we heard the softest sounds, you would hear how it would break up like that. We need more. I don't hear it at all. Yeah, this is about right, like 0.15. And then as it fades out, you hear that sort of a sound, right? Um, now we need to add some reduction to the... Uh, sound. So that's going to be like as if it was a low quality sample. And it's going to get very bright sounding. This distortion is, is very bright, very annoying. But what you don't know, or what I, or not you, but many people don't realize is that when you're talking vintage digital, they actually tend to sound dark. And the reason is, is because um, the bit crushing is not the end of the stage. There's actually an optimization filter or a low pass filter added after that, which we can do in Toxic. Um, so what we're going to do is just reduce the sample down a bit. We'll try 21 sounds good. 
and you can hear that aliasing frequency. So what that's doing is that chop, it's chopping off those high frequencies and causing them to fold back. And that's giving us that ringing that we've heard on a lot of my vintage digital keyboards. Mark Rouse, I too have a crush on that crush. Now what we have to do is fix that. So one thing, we can add some animation to that. So that's gonna emulate sort of like the jitter that's inherent in a not perfect D to A. And so that kind of breaks up the sound from being a static. Right? And then what we can do is we can go to the filter here, put on low pass, and we're gonna just filter out, you know, some of the high end. So maybe bring it down to about 13 or so. And what we're gonna to try to do is basically cancel out that aliasing. Turn the resonance off. Oh, and it should be post. That's why I was wondering what was going on. Because it was pre, the filter was feeding into that bit crushing. But what we want to do is optimize that aliasing out. So I'm going to pick some moderately high notes. And see, that's what the vintage digital thing sounds like. So there is that crush in there, that sample reduction. But you kind of you kind of don't hear it because it's been pulled out. We could even put the a little more crush force in there if we want some more. A little bit little more extreme noise there. Maybe, I mean, that's a little too much. A little bit. This is sort of your vintage digital character. Right? Versus. That's clean. It's a subtle thing. Clean. Now we're going vintage digital. that reduction so we get yeah that's a little extreme with the crush force so we can turn that off so anyways yeah just that's how that sounds with it on That's how it sounds just naturally. Anyways, I know that was a bit of a detour, but I just thought it would be a fun little experiment to show a little bit. I don't think Toxic's the perfect plugin for doing this. If you wanted to, uh, Tal makes a digital analog to uh, converter plugin called Tal DAC that's really good um, for that type of thing. So anyways, Frozen Wasteland. Mighty Pinto, welcome my friend. How are you doing? push that really far away with the mod wheel. Very cool. Wax orchestrone. Saturated old vintage resonant string pad. Wanderer. Thank you. 
beautiful, huge, huge reverbs. Eddie Von Synth. too really love some of these um this one's great for just like you know fucking synth pop fs1r very dynamic sound i'd love to hear that one actually to the core nice little square wave Interesting sort of phasery reverb droning on. Very cool. Love a good drone. Passing resonance. Ooh, this one's good. Fun one there. Velvet Purity. We take it far, far away. Interesting way that we could control these sounds. We want to bring it in slowly, you know what I mean? synth pluck it was a very very bright version of some of the sounds that uh, we heard in the Vangelis sound bank you can tune that brightness I love that you can tune the brightness and the depth really push it far away beautiful one and i think this is the last patch in the library that we've checked we we have i believe What a great place to uh, to call it tonight. I mean, just in my opinion, once again, Luftrum has uh, picked out some of the coolest stuff and Ark Sun has just done an incredible job. I mean, really the praise should go to Ark for doing just, you know, to me, it's it fits in so beautifully along with libraries like Gemina, for instance, has that same sort of atmosphere, but this is very focused 
very synth keyboard player oriented. Um, every sound was great. I mean, how many libraries can you say that of? Where they just every sound hits. Um, Anthony J, would you do a Korg OW01W video? Of course I would. I'd love to check out that synthesizer. Um, I just, you know, can only buy so many synthesizers uh, at a time. I don't get, you know, the amount of money I get from the YouTube channel is very, very small. And, um, you know, synthesizers cost a lot. And I also don't have room for them. Um, so, Zozilla, get some great rest tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, Alex, still using undercurrent expansions and the lo-fi one. I use undercurrent all the time. I don't use unclean machine as much. And for like my most recent single with Miss FD, I used a lot of seismic shock, the more EDM dubstep heavy distorted oriented um, one. But undercurrent I use all the time. Undercurrent is the greatest like patch library ever. Um, and then I think the only real difference between that and what Luftrum's doing, because all of the Luftrum libraries are incredible too. The only real difference is it's just that like there's so much sample content that they created for that pack. Whereas this pack is using all sound sources that were already in Omnisphere. Um, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony says I could just hear the dark ambient beats. Yeah, it's definitely like dark ambient focused. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Gemini is good or better? Um, I did the video on that one. I would check it out and decide for yourself. Uh, Gemini has a lot of sounds in it. So if nothing else, there's a lot in there. Um, I'd have to hear them back to back. I, but my instinct is, is that this one is a little bit more subdued than Gemini. I feel like Gemini could, was like pushed a little bit for better or worse. I remember Dubstation Zero being like, it's a little too bright for him. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody got to donate one. I just got to fly down. I'll let you use mine. Yeah. Well, I'm always accepting synth donations for sure. Um, MX White, I hope you get your uh, ASIO problems figured out with your TR8S. Uh, sounds like you guys are getting close there. Um, yeah. One of these days I'll set up a Discord to help with stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I, but I would say that, I mean, the biggest thing is is that you get like discounts off of Luftrum's site the more libraries you add. So if you're really thinking about it and you have Omnisphere, I would consider. Um, yeah. Hey, I'll take your old Farfisa. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, um, I've, I've had a couple people offer it, but I, um, the only thing is, is like shipping synths can be dangerous. So I would feel terrible if like somebody's synth got crushed in the mail or something. I've thought about Lunaris too. I, or Lunaris, I don't know how to say it. Lunaris, Lunar, Lunar, Lunaris, Lunaris, Lunaris. I've thought about it too, Aquatic. I, uh, definitely want to check it out. Um, I think that uh, what Love from Zoo is just crazy. And um, yeah, it's just awesome. I'm really excited. As always, it's just uh, these sounds like they make me want to make that kind of music, right? And that's what you really want out of uh, even a synthesizer, right? It's just for to feel inspired to do something with it. So whether we're talking hardware or software, for me, when I get one of these sound banks, I, it, they're inspiring to me. They make me want to go into that dark ambient apocalyptic, you know, space, itinerant ghost type space. Um, well, I'm glad we've been helpful. Um, keep searching and let us know next stream if everything worked out, if you're able to figure it out. Tone 2's Gladiator, yeah. So um, anyways, guys, continue to be excellent. I love each and every one of you. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week.